Hi there, welcome to Elm Colors. I'm Erica. On today's video, we are going to be starting our color along for March. And since I have a hashtag out there right now that is Myth and Magic March on Instagram, um, this is going to be count for my hashtag. So this is full of fairy tales, but lots of the fairy tales have magic. So I thought that that would count, and I thought that I would do this Cinderella dress today. So, yeah, I think that's going to be really pretty. Uh, very magical when she gets turned into the, you know, when her dress gets transformed by her fairy godmother. So, uh, and then I did go online and I found some fun images that uh, I will have printed off to the side here, and I will go ahead and pop a few of those on screen for you here and there when I am um, really drawing from that inspiration. Definitely going to be going towards more of a blue dress, probably blonde hair, uh, lots of sparkles. I really liked, I saw this pink carriage. I was like, oh, that's really pretty. But then I saw this turquoise color carriage and oh, I love that one from the movie. Uh, and then I thought I would add in uh, some vines maybe around the outside. We'll see. We'll see how adventurous I feel. Um, but yeah, so this is this is our page for the month. And I'm going to be using a mix of ink tents and probably a few other pencils. And of course, we'll have everything listed in the description below. So with that being said, I need to pull some colors and then we can get started. Okay, so on the background here, I'm gonna pop up on screen the picture that I am using as inspiration. So I have, I know I just said I was gonna use ink tents, but we're gonna use some um, super colors to start with. Now this will work with any, you know, you could use ink tents on the background as well, uh, but you just need, if you're gonna use ink tents, you need to make sure that on your lighter tones, where you want the lighter colors, you use less pressure. Um, and that's really going to be the biggest difference, but in the super colors, I have this really light blue that I can use to kind of hold my place. You could also use white to, um, lighten up the tones with your ink tents. Uh, but I'm going to use these colors in the background. So I've got, um, what colors do I have? I have bluish pale, blue jeans, uh, Prussian blue and black. So I'm going to start with the bluish pale and I'm just going to, in this area where these sparkles are right here, I'm going to add this, I'm going to add that lighter color here. And then I'm going to do kind of, I don't know how to describe it, but just kind of different, <laughs> I don't know, you'll see how I do it when I do it. But if you look at the, the, the um, inspiration image, you can kind of see how the color is not, it's not just a flat color, it kind of moves and shifts. So that's kind of my game plan. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to speed that up so you guys can see what I do, but it's basically just going between these four colors from light to dark, and then I will be adding the water as well. So I will talk to you again here in a second. Okay, so that's the first layer, and you can tell that it looks a little streaky, a little crazy, but that's okay because I'm going to go back in with these colors again. I'm going to add in probably colors straight from my brush. Uh, I need to let this dry a little bit. Uh, show you on the back side, there is no bleed through, so that's good news. 
uh, yeah, so I'm gonna let this dry a little bit and then I am going to come back in with these same colors and take it directly from my brush and just add in the stroke so I get that nice flowy whatever background that is. <laughs> again, referring to the image that is on the screen for you guys. So I will talk to you again here in a second. All right, so you can see here that I do start off using uh, the color straight from the brush, but then I realize that it's just not dark enough. So I try to color straight on the page with the um, super colors. And again, I'm using black and Prussian blue kind of layered over top of each other to create that nice dark navy blue color. And it works pretty well for most of the page. Uh, but you'll see here in a little bit that I kind of change tactics a little bit. So right now I'm still using just the super colors, I'm trying to create more of that, uh, those swaths of color like I showed in the inspiration image, which I'll put that back on screen here again in a little bit, uh, but I just wanted to kind of talk you through this. So then I'm just going back through and activating the super colors to try to get um, some nice color saturation. And typically my super colors work really well, but this is just not giving me the darkness that I was looking for. So we will be doing some um, <laughs> troubleshooting here in a little bit. But yeah, for now, this is this is my process. And if you guys want to follow along, this is <laughs> This is what I did. So I'm gonna let the rest of this play out and I will talk to you again here in a second. Okay, while we're letting that dry a little bit more after that second layer, I'm gonna go ahead and add in um, some pink onto the flowers around the outside. So I'm gonna use crimson from my Derwent Ink Tense and I'm just gonna do this set of flowers down here and then it'll just be replicated for all of the other flowers. So I'm just gonna do a light layer very light layer of this crimson on the flowers here. Super light. Make sure my water brush is nice and clean. And then I'm just going in and adding the water. And that's the thing to remember with the ink tents is you can get super light colors. You just have to use really light pressure and not add too much pencil to the paper. Like use way less than you think that you might actually need. <laughs> uh, you can also pick, the, pick this up from the tip, but then wherever you start out is gonna be darker in tone. So you can see there, I've got a darker bit, but then I can I spread that out pretty quickly then I can get that color kind of all over the place so again if you start in the area that you know is what you want to be darker then it's not quite so bad and then I can use that little bit just kind of all over the flower so there's a couple different ways that you can do that so with this method you don't end up seeing any of the little streaks so I don't know if you'll be able to see that I'm going to hold this a little closer to the screen so you can see so on this one there's a little bit of the lines still in there from when I colored on the page and this one doesn't have any of those lines the little dots in there are just from the, the paper reacting to the water but those will go away so I think for this one I'm going to do the same thing that I did on this one because I'd rather not have those lines so you just pick up a little bit and start in the area you know for sure that you want to be dark and then just spread that color all over the place okay and then I am going to uh, do the same thing for the rest of the pink flowers and then I will talk to you again here in a second All right, flowers are all done. This is drying still, it's not quite dry. I don't wanna take a heat tool to it quite yet. I wanna try to let it dry as much as possible on its own. Okay, and then so on my flowers, I'm gonna be using ink tents. I'm gonna use mallard green and apple green. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of the apple in a couple of spots on my flowers. And then the rest is gonna be this mallard, maybe a little bit of the iron green too. I think that's my dark green, right? 
yeah. So a little bit of the mallard and a little bit of the iron green. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and again, I'm not coloring super dark and I'm not pushing too hard. And then we're gonna add just a little bit in the shadow areas here with the iron. Do the same thing on these leaves down here. Not pushing super hard with this mallard. And then a little bit of the iron in the shadow areas. Okay, so let's get in there with my water brush. I'm gonna start in the apple green area and work my way into that mallard color and then into that iron green color. Trying my best not to get more green into my pink. <laughs> so clean off my brush a little bit, come back in here, blend all that out. This paper, working with ink tents on this paper is like a dream, it's just, <laughs> So good. Okay, I do need to turn my book a little bit just so I can get the right um, angle. So hopefully, yeah, you guys are still on camera here. Okay, so I'm going to start with the apple. Push into that mallard green color. And then keep working my way till I get into that iron green. Try my best to keep that iron green in that shadow area. Clean up my brush, clean up my mess. <laughs> All right, let's do one more together. Well, two more, we'll do both these leaves and then I'll do the rest of them off camera because it's basically the same thing over and over and over. Yeah, this is just this is so fun. <laughs> I don't know if that's weird or not, but I love these ink tents. They're so cool. Like the super colors worked uh, fine. I'm sure I could have done just a, as nice a job with my ink tents on the background, but I really wanted to try those. Oops, sorry about that. I need to get back over here. I really wanted to try those super colors on the background and it just, it worked okay, but I wish I would have done my ink tents now, seeing how quick and easy these blend. I should have just stuck with my original plan. But it is done. I'm thinking I probably could have gotten away with just one um, layer of ink tents on the background when I did my sky. So that is what all of the flowers are going to look like all the way around. So I'm going to go ahead and go off camera and do those. And then when we come back, uh, I will, yeah, I might add a little bit of ink tents because I really want to make some of this dark, like really dark. So I might add a little bit of ink tents on top of this and then we will start in on the rest of the stuff. So I will um, do my leaves and I'll be right back. Okay, leaves are all done. I am going to, and this is dry now, so I'm gonna attempt to go back over some of this with my iron blue and my Payne's gray uh, from my ink tent set. And I'm just gonna pick the color up straight from my brush. So let's try the iron blue first. And then if we need to go darker, we can. But I just wanna get some of the darker areas, just a little bit darker. And when you are picking the color up, you want to make sure that you are not too close to your image because then you can get splatters, <laughs> which I have 100% had happen before. So just want to make sure that you are either picking the color up away from your page or like very far back, one of the two. So I am going to make sure that I'm not right on top of my page because I don't want to mess it up. Yeah, I think this iron blue is giving me enough of the blue color that I want, the darkness that I want. I 
If you get a little bit on the hair, just try to push it back off with a clean brush. Yeah, this iron blue is a really deep, dark blue, and I like it a lot. Okay, and then of course, since I'm adding more water to this page, I'm going to have to let it dry again. <laughs> So, I thought I was going to be able to get this done in the afternoon, but I don't know that that's going to be the case now. Because I have life to do today, and I'm hoping that I can find the time to get back and work on this some more today. I was thinking it was just going to be a one, a one video color along. But I don't know if that's going to be the case or not. Okay, I want this dark blue right along the edges. Clean off my brush. Okay. I like that better and when I add in because I'm planning on adding in a bunch of um, sparkles and like a magic trail kind of thing so it won't be as that'll be take away some of the focus on the background okay all right, so I think that's it. I'm going to have to let this sit and dry. And hopefully I can get back to this. I want to add a little bit more color right here. This is just that blue jean color I was using earlier. Just want to make sure it's right up against. Okay, so when I come back, I think we'll work on the horse and the carriage. We're gonna save Cinderella for last and then all of like the touch-ups and stuff to the um, flowers. The other thing I might do is I might go back in with my crimson and just in the shadow areas, add a little bit darker um, pencil. I'll kind of show you what that would look like. And it's just gonna be really subtle, but it'll give it like a blended look so that it's not just a flat color. Just basically like that. So I think I'll probably go through and do that on all of the flowers too, just so that I can so I don't have to go back over it with colored pencil to shade later. I can just get this, this shading done really quickly with my ink tents. And it'll still look pretty. And this is just quick and easy shading. And then we're all done. So yeah, so I think I'm going to do that on all of the flowers um, around the outside. I like the shading on the, the leaves so far. Yeah, so okay, when we see when you see me again, flowers will be shaded and we'll start working on the horse in the carriage. Alrighty, so we have all my flowers are as shaded as they're gonna be. These aren't the main focus, so I'm not really paying a whole lot of attention to these. I will be going through and adding in a little bit of sparkly to them at the end of this video and maybe a little bit of like gold in the center or something, but that's not my main focus. So I do want to do this carriage and I do want to do it with a couple of different pencils. So I'm going to combine, I think I want to try to shoot for this um, picture and I'll put that up on screen too so you guys can see what I'm talking about, but I really, really love the turquoise color of that. And I think that I can get that um, by using that teal green color. I just have to be very, <laughs> very careful and um, 
but yeah, I think that's going to, I think that's going to look nice. So if you'll notice on the uh, image, the edges, I'm going to move this over here so that I can have this image up on screen for you guys too. The, um, the shading is, you know, there's quite a bit of shading in the like where the lines of the pumpkin are and around the outside edge. And then it's pretty white in the center. So that is going to be my game plan here. And I think that this continues down underneath here. So that's the way we're going to do it. Okay. And then for... Yeah, and then here I'm gonna leave a little bit of a line. And again, this is very lightly, I'm this is super, super light coloring, you guys. Not no heavy pressure at all. You can see how far back I'm holding my pencil. Uh, I don't want it to be. I don't want the lines to be too heavy. Okay. And then I'm going to have a little bit uh, heavier pressure in that darker crease. And we're going to color a little bit in all of these shadowed areas. Okay. What do we think of that? I think that looks okay. I'm going to do another line on right underneath the window frame. Yeah. Okay. All right. So here we go. So we're going to take my water brush and we're going to use, going to, again, you want to make sure that you start in the lighter area and move towards the dark. And then if I want to pull that color out into the wet, I can, and it'll blend better than starting in the dark and pulling it out. Okay, let's just get these the little areas down here colored. Oops, well, I'm gonna be going over that with gold paint anyway, so it's okay. All right, do you have to, well, I'm gonna, yeah, I do have to turn the book. So we're gonna turn it all the way around, all the way around. Here we go. All right, and again, I'm gonna start in the white area and then move into that color. Kind of keep my tip. Okay, clean off my brush a little bit. Kind of play with that color so that it blends out nice and neat. Okay. I do want to play with that a little bit if I can. Uh, on this paper, thankfully, you have a little bit of time to work with your ink tents. Um, not a ton, but some. Okay, so I'm going to turn this back around. Uh, let's see. I can come back in here and Okay, well, we're gonna let that dry and then I can readdress things that, you know, if I don't like them. Okay, so this part here, you wanna, I mean, I'm gonna start with the dark part because I don't want it to go all the way to the edge. Um, so I'm just using my brush to control where this line of turquoise goes. So I have a little bit of a white um, border still there. And then this is a little bit darker in here, so I want to push that color right up underneath that line. Get that color over there. And right now I'm just using a clean brush to blend out that color as best I can. Okay, so again, I'm starting in the white and moving into the dark. Sorry, <laughs> it took me a minute to realize I, I had a thought to finish. 
Um, again, starting in the lighter area. And I'm just very I'm trying to control where my bristles go as best I can. And this works best if you have quite a bit of water flowing through your brush as well. Okay. And if I lose that little white line, I can always add it back in later with a Posca or something, which we'll probably be doing quite a bit of work with Posca and other paint pens. Just because that'll help add to the magical overall effect, I think. Okay. That looks pretty cool. Okay, and then for the horse, I'm gonna kinda have to go with my gut here. And I think that I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna make the horse's little blanket kinda match what her dress is gonna look like later on, I think. So we're gonna use some of this iris blue and I'm gonna very super lightly Add in some color here. Again, barely touching the page, trying to avoid all of those little objects. Although I'm gonna probably go back over them with some kind of different medium anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. Okay, and then I'm just gonna activate that. Horse is going to be white. Um, the curtains, we could do the same pink color probably as the flowers. That would tie it in, but maybe a little bit darker. So we'll just go ahead and color those in pretty solidly. I'm not pushing hard, but it's a solid coating of color instead of as light as we were doing it before. Okay, that is done. I do want to do the inside of the carriage as well. And I want a little bit of like a tan color, but I'm thinking that I might need to use a pencil to get the look that I want in there. Cause I want it to be cream, but I also want a little bit of um, like a shadow, but not too much. Kind of the same as the picture uh, of the carriage that I showed earlier and the one that I'll put on screen right now too. I kind of want that same similar vibe of the the interior. Uh, yeah, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my pencils and we'll do some work on the horse here and a little bit of work on the interior of the carriage. All right, so let's work on the horse for a second. I've got um, a couple of grays pulled. I am using my Spearer Farben pencils. So I have silver Visla. Uh, French gray and white. So I'm going to start with the French gray and just add in a little bit of shadow color wherever I think there would be some shadows. So just along the tail here, I'm gonna blend that out a little bit with this Visla, and then I am going to go over with the white. And I will probably be outlining the tail with white uh, Posca as well, just so it is a nice, bright, vibrant white. So again, I'm gonna start in the darkest areas with this French gray. So anywhere where there's gonna be some shadow. that out just a tiny bit with this other color. All 
All right, and then I am gonna use this, also use this silver visla color to kind of create like a, it's not, it's not maybe like an edge almost, if that makes sense. So that looks, you can kind of tell that the horse's leg isn't just flat, that it's rounded. So when you have that little edge there, that kind of helps create that look. Okay, and then we'll blend that out with the white as best we can. Let's fill this whole area in. And then back in with the Silver Visla, I just want to soften up this line a little bit more so it's not super harsh. Since I have that white on there now, that'll be a nice blend there. Okay. We add a little bit darker, a little bit more pressure in the darkest areas. This whole area is pretty dark. Okay. Uh, and then I just noticed that down here at the bottom uh, is some ground that I don't really know what to do with. So we're just going to color it black because I don't have another option at the moment. So it's just going to be black and that's, that's part of the hoof which I think I'm gonna do the huff in um, grays, but I'm gonna use this black as a kind of like a, a shadow color and then use the French gray over the whole thing. And then we'll use the Silver Vista on top of that. And then again, it in here with the black so that it's nice and shadowed. All right, um, let me add a little bit of black to the tail here. The white on uh, is this white doesn't do a whole lot, but it does help kind of blend things out a little bit. So that's why I use that. Okay, so the horse's part is done. <laughs> and then we're gonna do the inside of the carriage here. So I have a few different colors. Again, these are all Shabira Farben. So I have Blooming Bouquet, uh, Rose, Burnt Sienna, and Ivory. So I'm gonna start with the Ivory. And we're gonna have this part in here be kind of that ivory color. A little bit up that way. And then I'm gonna go over top of that with this rose color. Nope, this is Blooming Bouquet. And then I'm gonna use the Burnt Sienna just in the corners a little bit to make this a little more brown. Give it a little bit of shadow. And a little bit of the rose on top of that, just a tiny bit. And then back over with the Blooming Bouquet. Blending that out even more into the cream area or ivory that was down. And then over everything with the ivory. Okay, and then on the curtains, I'm gonna use this rose color 
to add a little shadow. Nope, that's not dark enough. So maybe we can just use the crimson itself. Yep. So I'm just gonna add in a little bit of shadow with the crimson. I'm just gonna color with it. I don't think I'm gonna activate this. I'm just gonna color with it. And you can add a little bit of color in the corners here. And then again, in this corner, we're gonna continue that line. I had to add just a little bit of um, shading so it looks like it's pleats of a curtain. Uh, yeah, I think that that is good. So, when we come back next, I will be working on Cinderella herself. And we will be doing all of the fun little embellishments that I have planned. So, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this so far. Uh, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. That way you can kind of see the whole thing. Um, I think it looks pretty cute so far. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And um, make sure to join me for the next part of this. Uh, until next time, I'll see you later. Bye. Bye.